Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. Today I'm bringing you a video that will cover in assassinations, how to do them more effectively, what to look out for, how to time and how to use openings to achieve more assassinations and hopefully make you a better assassin overall. Now, this is a surprisingly simple formula I just wanted to cover for all those assassins players who I give little to no love to because this channel's never really covered assassinations too much and I'm gonna divulge why. So finding an opening is everything to an assassin. Second to finding an opening is a timing. Now I'm going to explain what this means. These two simple words are what the assassin roles are effectively used around. Openings and timings. Now some other guide makers have tried to actually explain when to go in. This in my opinion is impossible because the variance of when to go in is a trillion different scenarios. But I will give you generalized rules and general tools to help you under better understand when you should go in. Now most of this will be simple but I'm going to uh, summarize it overall so you never make mistakes when going into assassinate. Don't force assassinations. The assassin role is high risk, high reward. It requires patience, a lot of timing, and a lot of finesse to actually pull off. I see so many players who just simply don't suit the role. If you're not patient, you should not be playing the role, or at least you have to train yourself to become more so. Timing and looking for openings is important. I see so many assassins go up front in an entire fight and try to force assassinations, trying to get assassinations really early into the fight without waiting for anything. I see people just ulting as Rengar to try and make a pick to start a fight. This is a bad idea overall, and because if you think about it if you go in this early you get a 1v1 great if you're lucky and assuming they don't peel you off or burst you but say you do get the 1v1 you're dead now and you're not useful assassins have to wait for the enemy to go out of position or wait for their team to engage to create an opening for them this guide is going to cover what to look out for i just wanted to mention uh this don't force an assassinations part and when you should never do this uh, if if you feel forced or the success rate of your assassination is relatively low you shouldn't be doing it uncategorically. So let's go into when to time go in. Openings. So an opening is when a vulnerable member of the enemy team does one of the following. Cut away from the group. This one's pretty common. If an enemy isolates themselves from the group by going to far minions and side lanes, go for them. If an enemy looks mid, it looks like they're going for blue buff by themselves mid game, go for them. The enemy Eddie carries going for red buff by themselves, get them. Follow them and kill them. Uh, anytime someone peels away from a group by themselves, you can always follow and assassinate for them. Before a fight, the enemy sports tries to get some wards down. You see that they're roaming off to the side towards the dragon. Follow them and kill them. This is an isolation kill and always should be taken advantage of whenever you can. Um, enemies always cut themselves off to go solo at some point, even if it's not really coherent or logically doesn't even make sense. It's up to you to not only react to them moving, but know where they're going to go before they actually do it. This requires a lot of practice. A good tip for this is massive minion waves. Waiting near them for the inevitable AD carry and mid to come greedily sucking them all up is a really good way to get plenty of assassinations. Note, during team fights, very low enemies or people in low cooldowns may back off from the group as well. This is also another opening. Mispositioning. Now, a lot of you are going to say, well, yeah, I, I get that. And it's kind of similar to the last point with a little change, though, because it's more team fight orientated. So sometimes AD carry supports mids can misposition heavily. This is an opening. Now, normally in a fight, you can't force the assassination, which I've already covered. You can't jump in and try and kill people because you'll die, right? They'll, they'll kill you. They'll burst you down. They'll peel you. At the end of that, you can't jump in. But sometimes an AD carry, for example, a Caitlyn will back away from her peel uh, to try and put a... Uh, trap down for example or they'll just back off when they think you're around so if you burn off your ranger ultimate some stupid eddy carries can actually back off away from the peel which is a which is what i call a panic play um even if it's not you forcing them if uh, you're someone's throwing poke and the uh, eddy carry for example backs way off to avoid it you can use this to go on the side and get a flank and a kill people miss position quite a bit before fights and during fights so you always want to take advantage of them Low enemy. Now, obvious point is obvious. Anytime an enemy's low, even if they do peel you after a second or two, you'll always get the kill no matter what. Now, one thing I will say this, take this with a pinch of salt. Although this is really great, and it is very important to make sure an AD carry mid once pop down to near death is actually dying so they can't rejoin the fight it's important to make sure that happens but at the end of the day i try to avoid using this one low enemies are very obvious and they're very tempting to go in for unless you're on a reset champion like katarina or kazix for example i avoid doing this now the reason for it is it's a really obvious pick you're using all of your bursts in an enemy that is already going to die from one touch in the fight if they rejoin low enemies are really good openings because no matter what even with the fastest of peel for the most part you should get the kill that's the only benefit of this opening 
overall. These are openings that your enemy or team create for you. These are reactions you've got to have to these openings. You have to go to these people immediately once you see any of these openings. These are external changes that normally come before timing. So these ones are really obvious. Now, what I will say is if you see one of these big points, you should more than likely act on it. Openings or all you have to do to get these openings is look. There's no timing, there's no high level gameplay. This, these things happen, go and deal with them and kill your enemy. Keep an eye on minion on uh, enemy's movements, I should say, and then move in for the kill. Openings, these are very simple. Once again, anyone can do them, unlike timing. Now, timing is actually completely different from openings. Openings, you can just see, as I've mentioned previously, and go. Very simple. Uh, enemies peel off, you get them. Uh, they look for the going for the buff, you get them. Simple, anyone can do it. Any assassin can look for an opening, but to differentiate the good from the amazing assassins, you have to time the three following things. Number one, enemy mobility. Number two, enemy peel. And number three, enemy burst. Now, I'm not just saying this for my health. If you want to become a better assassin, you actually have to start tolerating up and in your head mentally understanding cooldowns of all the abilities. You have to start mentally calculating these during fights and understand who's down what. Watch how the fight is going and remember the approximate cooldown of these abilities. If you remember, you can know you're safe and go in and your enemy just can't jump away. You can make sure the Alistair just won't headbutt you away. And most importantly, you can go in and ensure you won't get smashed by an only 100-0 burst. Now, all the bad assassins will jump and go, I think I'm safe, this guy's kind of low. If that's you, listen up. No, you have to calculate. If I jump in here, is Alistair's headbutt up? Is it up? If I jump in here, has the Cinder burned her ultimate yet? If I jump in here, is the, has that Ezreal got his shift? Now, the difference between yes and no is day and night. If you jump in and they've got one of these things, you're dead. Or you're not assassinated and you'll be sitting in no man's land. That will cost you death. Now, the reason why professional assassins never get caught out and you don't see it that often is because they calculate these cooldowns and they calculate and they know when they're safe and they know when they can abuse and go in and slaughter an entire team. This is the problem I see most people don't do with assassins. It's a high skill cap role. It requires intelligence and great mechanics. Out of all roles, I'd say being a pro assassin is probably one of the most rewarding roles and the most difficult to achieve, which is the reason why in low elo I always tell people not to play Zed, for example. You have to think of cooldowns to see more openings. The, the problem is with low level assassins, they don't see these openings even though they're there. If you don't see many openings in fights, you can only see low HP enemies, you're playing the role wrong, I 100% assure you. If you start thinking about these three things, cooldowns of mobility, peel and burst, and time going in around these cooldowns, you'll turn into a freak, a freak train which no one can stop. Now I've covered what you have to remember and count in your head to see more timed openings. I'll now cover the timed scenarios and why they're important which I've already went over. Peel and defensive abilities are down. If you go in with a peel or a kill ultimate up, for example, you're wasting your time. Peel is the hardest counter to an assassin in the game. There's no way around it. If you're a frontliner, I is normally decently good. Uh, one Alistair headbutt makes you immediately useless if you're, or if not dead really. You have to wait until hard peel has been used. Now hard peel is almost immediately used at the start of most fights unless you're uh, versus a very skilled frontliner. And this only really happens around platinum or diamond. In low levels, wait until you use their peel. I don't care if you're sitting at the side of the fight doing nothing. You have to wait. Burst down. Okay, the second most important thing is when burst is down. Uh, so you're a squishy damage dealer, you're an assassin. Jumping in with big burst abilities that are not down can get you killed rather than your enemy. Now some bursts will always be up. Some revenue of huge quick damage is always going to be up. But just make sure the vast majority and the big ones are down. Uh, Annie's ultimate, is it down? That is really just the biggest point. Annie's QW can do damage, but uh, you should try and avoid around that as well. But if you can, mainly avoid around the big burst damage. Mobility down. If mobility is down, such as Flash, for example, or a Tristana jump, you have to wait till it's burned out before you jump in. Now, once again, this is really commonly used at the start of a fight. Assuming your front line is doing their job correctly, the Tristana should have had to jump already. She should have had to back out. And because of that, mobility is usually down pretty quick. You have to wait till it's over, though. Overall, now, a lot of you are going to tell me, well, you're asking too much here. This is ridiculous. We all know this. If you think this perfect scenario doesn't exist during teamfights, for example, I'd say you're wrong 
only, you have yet to experience the rule fully, especially if you're below platinum. During fights, people burn mobility, burst, and peel like they're on a fire seal. During fights, the enemy frontliner will have to peel to defend the backline. During a fight, the enemy backliner will have to burn mobility to avoid your frontliner. Already two things off the list, and in the first, usually five seconds. This is why the rule is all about timing. If, as an AD, as a assassin, you have to be patient and wait for these openings to arise. So, so, so many players just don't do this, or they don't have the ability to. The assassin role is about waiting for that perfect opening and trying to find it, or at least seeing a good one. If you feel you have to panic to get your damage out, you, the assassin role, you have to either teach yourself to be more patient, or it's just simply put, not for you. The assassin role is all about waiting for your front line and your back line and the enemy to spread up enough and use enough cooldowns before you jump in and kill them. This is the reason why assassins can be useless if they're A not ahead or B if your team is behind. Now I know a lot of these guys will have probably have seen, well I'm playing an assassin and I'm really far ahead but but, but I'm, I'm dying for some reason now, I'm not doing very well. The reason for that is your team's not doing well. If your team's not doing well, the assassin doesn't do well because your team is too weak to create openings for you. This is the problem with the assassin role, although it can singularly carry a game, it can also singularly lose a game as well, because they only work when really in an ahead scenario, or whenever your enemies, your allies I should say, are strong enough to create some sort of opening. And that's the main thing you have to remember about the assassin role, sometimes you'll wait at the side of a fight, and you'll never jump in. Sometimes a fight will start off and your team, your frontline will die immediately, you just have to back off. The feeling of having to go in really quickly and do damage is something you should just avoid. Wait for the timings. The timings aren't always going to arise, they're not always going to be there, and that's just how the game works. If that wasn't the case, assassins could jump in at any time and murder everyone. That's the strength and that's the counter to assassins as well. You have to remember that. Be patient, look for the opening, if it doesn't arise, don't go in. So in summary, if you remember anything out of this guide, remember this. Either wait for an opening at the start of the game to go in, an opening, your enemy, to make a mistake. If not arise, wait for the your team to create an opening for you when they've burned enough of the enemy team's PL mobility and burst. So, either wait for an opening, if not, wait for cooldowns to be bursted down, then go in, generally last second, or if someone's really, really low and you can get a reset, or they're out of position. Do you see where I'm going here? It's really simple. Either go for the opening, or just go in at the end. That is really, really that simple. If you're an experienced assassin and you live by that rule, I can assure you that will give you a big kickstart back into the role. Now, assassin's gonna take you a lot of practice, it, and going in, you should always practice when you can go in, how much damage you've got. The assassination role takes a crap ton of practice, more so, I would say, than nearly any other role in the game. Very, very difficult to pull off, but if you just remember that role, either wait, or go in when, uh, at the end of the fight, though there are two main times, just make sure you're not engaging as an assassin, and make sure you're not going in too early when all abilities are up. If you remember this, these simple things, you're now a great assassin. And that's it for the video, guys. If you like it, like it, dislike it, dislike it. If you like the content, you can subscribe. And if you think it's horrible, I've dropped the ball here. And the, I'm totally wrong. You can answer them totally fair. If you also think this this video could help anyone, or you just think it's interesting or awesome, you can also share it with guys. I'd really, really appreciate it. Maybe uh, get us a few extra good assassins out there. I also stream on Twitch TV, guys. The link will be in the low bar. I stream four days a week, uh, nine hours a day. And hopefully, I'll see you guys there. Uh, after me selling my soul to the devil, have a great day. Best luck of the rift. And I'll see you guys next time.